Constants? Coefficients? What the heck are those? Hey guys, it's Jen. I'm a test prep tutor, and today I want to share with you a couple of SAT math questions that have really funky wording. If you have any amount of experience taking SAT exams, then you'll know that half of the battle is figuring out what the heck they want you to do. One of the trickiest types of questions are these quadratic equations that involve constants and coefficients. I know a lot of students struggle with these because they haven't seen anything like it in school. Now this video was actually requested by somebody who saw my SAT math challenge video. I'll link that up here if you haven't seen it you should check that out. If you guys have any other questions you would like to see worked out, let me know in the comments. I do read those and they help me figure out what you guys wanna see and I definitely prioritize those. So today I chose several examples of this type of question and I really try to pick ones that showed all the different flavors they can come in. Now before we get into it, I just want to remind you to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. All right guys, let's get into it. So before we get into the actual examples, I feel the need to share with you some basic principles. So when we deal with quadratic equations, it's very important to remember that they can come in different forms, just like linear equations can be written in different forms. So there are three forms of the quadratic equation that you really need to know for the SAT. Okay, we're gonna start with the most basic, the standard form. This is the form that you saw first when you were introduced to parabolas and quadratics. So the standard form of a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, a and b, a and b here, these are called coefficients. Okay, and c here, this is the constant. Moving on to the factor form, this is everybody's favorite. The factored form is y equals a times parentheses x minus p, x minus q. So when do you use the factored form? Well, if we solve the factored form and set it to zero, then we get the roots, solutions, or x-intercepts of this quadratic. Okay, so where x equals p and q, those are going to be your x-intercepts roots or solutions. Why I keep using these other words is because I want you to know that they are interchangeable and all of these things tell you the same points. All right, so there's your factor form. Keep in mind, very important to keep in mind what these forms tell you. So again, factor form tells you the x-intercept, so keep that in mind. Next and last but not least, vertex form. This is probably the most complicated one of the three, but it's so important that you commit this one to memory. The vertex form is y is equal to a times parentheses x minus h squared plus k, where h comma k is your vertex. Now, what is the vertex? If you have a parabola, it's either going to be an upward smiley face or a downward frowny face. The vertex is the highest or lowest point, aka the minimum, the minimum, slash maximum value of your quadratic, okay? So this is extremely important. Just like before, where we learned that the factored form tells you the x-intercept, the vertex form tells you the vertex, aka minimum or maximum of your parabola. Hey guys, I just want to pop in here to say, I've actually made a list of all of the most common SAT math formulas. You can grab that for free on my website, all you have to do is to sign up for my newsletter. I will leave the link to that in the description box below. If you sign up, you'll have access to my free resource library. All right, back to the video. All right, so with that foundation set, let's now get into the actual examples. Here's the first question. Y is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 8. And the question reads, the equation above represents a parabola in the xy plane. Which of the following equivalent forms of the equation displays the x-intercepts of the parabola as constants or coefficients? Now, these types of questions are very easily recognizable because the wording is often very similar. Okay, so I want to say right off the bat something to keep in mind. When you deal with these questions, do not 
spend your time, waste your time, I should say, rewriting the answer choices, converting them to the standard form. You don't need to do that. Why? Because you're already told that they're all equivalent forms. Okay, so there's no point in rewriting them. You're going to get back to the standard form that you have right up there. What you need to pay attention, what the actual key to these questions is you need to know what keyword to look for so you know how to find the right answer. The keyword here is X intercepts. The X intercepts of the parabola we just talked about, right? What form of the quadratic equation will give you the X intercepts? If you recall, it was the factored form, the factored form. So looking at ABCD, wow, there's only one answer that even makes any sense and that is D, why? Because D is already in the factored form. If you want a little bit more, maybe we should uh, define the x-intercept a little bit more closely. So if we look at a quadratic equation, again, I'm gonna draw a smiley parabola. What is the x-intercept? Well, those are the points where we cross the x-axis, AKA the points where y is zero. To find that we set y equal to zero, well, you guys know from working with quadratics, to, in order to solve it equal to zero, you have to factor the quadratic. If we factor this one, we'll get x minus two and x minus four, which is the answer in D, All right? So there you go, let's try another one. This equation is y equals x squared minus six x minus 16. Okay, and this question reads, the graph of the equation above in the xy plane is a parabola. Duh, because it's a quadratic equation. Which of the following equivalent forms of the equation includes the x and y coordinates of the vertex as constants? All right, do you see how similar the wording is? It's practically identical. But instead of x-intercepts, this time we have the vertex. All right, same deal, okay? It's the same setup, same question. The only thing we have to switch out is rather than thinking about x-intercept, we wanna think about vertex. Do you remember what we just said? Which of the three forms of the quadratic equation gives you the vertex? Of course, it's the vertex form. And as a reminder here, the vertex form is y equals a x minus h squared plus k, where h comma k is the vertex. Look at these in comparison to what I just wrote down. Hopefully you can see that the only one that's even written in vertex form is going to be A. And that's your answer. I have almost no work on these questions. This is just about understanding the principle and then applying them to this question. Here's the next question. F of X is equal to X plus six times X minus four. This is already given to you in factored form. Okay, you have to get really good at recognizing the form that you are presented. This is factored form. Which of the following is an equivalent form of the function f above in which the minimum value of f appears as a constant or coefficient? All right, let me start by highlighting the keyword, which is minimum value. Why did I include this question? Because at first glance, it looks very similar to the previous one. Remember, minimum value is just another way of saying vertex. But I included this because I wanted to show you that sometimes the other question we did, it was very obvious because only one of the answers was written in vertex form. But sometimes you may be unlucky and you're presented with two answers in vertex form, in this case, C and D, okay? Both of these are written in vertex form. So you actually have to do a little bit of manipulation in order to get yourself to the right answer. We start in this case, we're starting from the um, factored form and I need to go to the vertex form, so I have to first go through standard form, and I do that by foiling this out. If I foil this out, I'll get x squared minus 4x plus 6x, that's plus 2x minus 24, okay? So that is my standard form. Now, in order to convert from standard to vertex, I have to do something called completing the square, Okay, so I'll do that here. And in this video, I'm going to go a little bit quick. I'm going to assume that you do know how to complete the square because it is a critical skill you need to have for the SAT. But if you guys don't know and you want to see a more in-depth video on that, I can make another video. Just let me know in the comments if that's something you would like to see. Okay, for now, I'm just going to go through the method of completing the square. Watch how I'm gonna write this. I'm gonna write my x squared plus two x term and then I'm gonna write my constant term way out to the right. So now I'm going to complete the square and we do that by adding 
b over 2 squared. Okay, my b here is 2. So b over 2, 2 over 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1, I'm going to add a 1. But I can't just add a 1 because that fundamentally changes the problem. So if I add a 1, I must immediately subtract that 1 out of my equation. Okay, so now I'm going to just factor the first part, which becomes x plus 1 squared and then combine my constants so I get minus 25, okay? So my actual answer here is D because that is the exact vertex form I would get for this equation. All right, let's do one more together. All right, let's do this last one. If y is equal to 3x squared plus 6x plus 2 is graphed in the xy plane, which of the following characteristics of the graph is displayed as a constant or coefficient in the equation? Now, I did tell you when I was going through these, I wanted to pick examples that showed you all the different flavors these questions can come in. And this is a really good example of that. We haven't seen anything like this yet. It's almost working backwards. We are given an equation and we're asked which of these following is represented. All right, so let's work through, work through these answer choices. I first wanna show you this equation. It's important to note what form it's in. Hopefully you guys see it's in standard form. Okay, first answer A, Y coordinate of the vertex. Well, if we wanted the vertex, we should be in vertex form, not standard form, so that's not it. B, X intercepts. Do you remember me saying X intercepts? If you wanna see that, that's, the val that's where Y is equal to zero. If we set Y equal to zero, we're going to factor. We would be in factored form. That's not factored form, that's standard form. Okay, let's look at C, the Y intercept. This is interesting. What is the y-intercept on a graph? The y-intercept is where the x value is zero. Let's see what happens when we plug in zero for x. Okay, if we plug in zero for x, these terms, these first two terms go to zero. That means we're left with a two. That means the y-intercept of our equation is two. But look, if the y-intercept is two, and our standard form already has two in the constant position, then we satisfy this question. Two, the y-intercept is a constant in this equation, so that's our answer. I think students get confused with these questions because they try to account for both constants and coefficients, but you don't need to do that. As long as the term in question matches one of these, so in this case two, two is the y-intercept, it's also the constant in this equation, we are good to go, you have satisfied this question. All right, guys, there you go. Lots of worked examples. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you to whoever asked this question because I'm pretty sure everybody can benefit from it. This is a really tricky problem type for most students. If you guys have any additional questions or any other problem types you have questions about, you wanna see worked out in detail, do let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and share it with everybody that you know. If you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.